another form of quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques is the expected monetary value the abbreviation for expected monetary value is EMV analysis so what is the expected monetary value it's a statistical analysis which calculates the average outcomes of future scenarios uh, it helps me predict the um, value uh, of each uh, scenario should things go in a certain way for a certain situation and of course it helps me decide which way to go or which option to choose now uh, a few few um, remarks about the um, monetary expected monetary value analysis is that it adopts a risk neutral assumption so it does not take into account the risk factor here uh, otherwise it would be very uh, complex and the way it works is by multiplying probability and impact values of the uh, scenarios we will see an example in a minute this is what is known as the decision trees so decision trees is the same as the expected monetary value analysis now the way uh, we use it to make decisions is uh, the um, EMV of opportunities must be uh, positive of course and we choose those um, if we have positive values the EMV of threats will be um, um, displayed as negative values and we always choose the option with the higher expected monetary value so if I'm talking about opportunities I will be choosing the option with the higher positive value if I'm talking about threats I will be choosing the option with the uh, less lesser value because it's negative so it's a uh, mathematically a higher um, value because it has a negative sign this is what a decision tree looks like I have a decision to make and I can go in two different directions I have two options or two scenarios to follow okay so this is called a decision node sorry a decision this is a decision node and these are chance nodes and you can see that the probability of this node happening or this thing happening this chance happening is 20 percent when the probability of this other chance happening is 80 percent and so on uh, and I have the outcome node which will be calculated let's take a look at an example with some numbers so we understand this concept very well the decision tree or the expected monetary value analysis is very important and I have placed this exam tip for you to draw your attention to this first of all it comes frequently in PMI exams PMP and PMI RMP and also it is really 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 easy to uh, answer correctly once you understand how to use it so let's take a look at this example with some figures in order to uh, correctly understand the concept let's assume that I have a decision to make and the decision is to build a new factory or upgrade the existing factory let's say I have a, a, a processing plant or a product production factory of some sort and I need to expand I need to increase my business and I have to make a decision uh, some people suggested that I should build a new plant or um, others suggested that I should upgrade the existing plant upgrade the existing machinery and equipment 
etc etc so how do I make the decision let's quantify it and that's why it is a tool and technique for quantitative risk analysis so quantifying this is done in this way I need to estimate the cost of building a new plant so if I uh, build a new plant I will be investing an amount of 120 million dollars for example how I come up with this estimate I may use the three-point estimate or some other way to estimate the cost it doesn't matter the point is I need to estimate how much this option is going to cost me on the other hand upgrading the plant is expected to cost me an investment of 50 million dollars now we studied the market conditions and we found that uh, there is a 60 per ch percent chance of having strong demand for my product whatever product that this plant produces so by studying the market condition I found that there is a 60 percent chance of having strong demand and a 40 percent chance of having weak demand for my product notice guys that this comes from the market from the enterprise environmental factors which was an input to the uh, perform quantitative risk analysis now the market conditions will be the same for all choices I cannot have different percentages here than here because these are based on market conditions however these are based on the choices I make this is why I have a different amount of investment than what I have here okay now we have uh, to estimate how much sales I may make in case of a strong demand so in case of a strong demand uh, and I am um, operating uh, with a new plant so I have built a new plant bigger and better and everything I expect to make sales of uh, 200 million dollars however in case of a weak demand and I have built a new plant I expect sales of 90 million dollars by the same token if I have upgraded my plant and keep in mind that upgrading the plant will give me a more limited capacity than building a new plant so the operation of the upgraded plant will be slightly um, uh, the, pr the production rate I mean will be slightly less and this is why in the case of a strong demand and I have upgraded the plant I expect to make sales of 120 million only and in the case of weak demand uh, for my product I expect to make sales uh, of 60 million dollars only now what is the value of the end node here okay the value is I have to subtract the um, expected amount from the uh, node here minus the investment amount so the value of the end node is 200 million minus 120 million gives me 80 million so basically the 80 million is my net profit in case of strong demand I would have uh, uh, sold 200 million dollars but I have invested 100 million, uh, 120 million dollars, so my net profit would be uh, 80 million. Uh, in the same way, I have to calculate the value of the end node in case of weak demand. So I subtract 90 million minus 120 million. I get a value of negative 30 million so basically in case of weak demand what this is saying is in case of weak demand I would lose 30 million because my sales would be only 
90 million but I have invested 120 million to build a new plant so I would make a loss of um, 30 million dollars. In the same way I calculate the uh, value of the end nodes of all the other uh, branches and they come out as this the value of this end node is 70 million and the value of this end node is 10 million now all I need to do is walk backwards in this um, decision tree and I need to multiply the value of the end nodes by their probability of occurrence because we estimated based on the market conditions that I have a 60% chance or probability of having a strong demand this means that generating 80 million dollars has a 60% probability and having a loss of 30 million dollars has a 40% probability having 70 million dollars in case of a, a plant upgrade also has a 60% probability and so on keep in mind guys that the these probabilities should be the same for every every one of these uh, options because they are related to the market conditions and not to the option we make so let's do that I multiply 80 million multiplied by 60 which is here and I add to it minus 30 million multiplied by 40 this gives me the value of this option so if I choose this option I get a value of 36 million dollars I do the same for this option and I calculate its net value I multiply 70 million by 60 percent and I add to it 40 percent multiplied by 10 million I get a 46 million dollars so which option is better for me according to this analysis I choose the option with the higher EMV so this is my preferred option